Preparations for Starship's eighth integrated flight test are in the final stages, targeting launch as early as Monday, March 3. Meanwhile, SpaceX has revealed key findings from the Flight 7 anomaly, along with critical design changes made for Flight 8 to prevent similar issues. But that's not all. Unexpected news has surfaced about the ninth flight test, hinting at what's next for Starship. Stick around as we break it all down. Starship Flight 8, packed with a set of ambitious mission objectives, is fast approaching its scheduled launch date. The past week saw key pre-launch activities, beginning with the rollout of Super Heavy Booster 15 to the launch site for final preparations. Upon arrival, the booster was lifted and secured onto the orbital launch mount, initiating a series of pre-flight checkouts. Notably, the hot stage ring, which facilitates stage separation, was installed at the launch site rather than before rollout, an operational change from previous missions. While the next major milestone, Starship 34's rollout and full stacking, was eagerly anticipated, unexpected developments have caused delays. For reasons unknown, the rollout of Ship 34 has not yet taken place, and its transport stand remains stationed outside Megabay 2, awaiting the vehicle. Adding to the uncertainty, SpaceX unexpectedly removed the hot stage ring from Booster 15 on Wednesday night. This wasn't the first time the hot stage ring was removed after installation. Previously, it was detached multiple times, taken to Star Factory for modifications, reinstalled, and then ultimately removed again before Booster 15 rolled out to the launch site. While the exact issue remains unclear, Two newly added horizontal bars were spotted on top of Booster 15, which were not present in previous boosters. These bars could be a recent structural upgrade to reinforce the forward dome. However, their presence may have interfered with the proper seating of the hot stage ring, necessitating multiple removals and adjustments. It's possible that the hot stage ring will be taken back to Star Factory for further adjustments if necessary. Alternatively, their removal might have been for unrelated reasons, such as additional work required on the booster's forward dome, which houses critical systems, including the grid fin actuators, avionics, and plumbing. Notably, this removal occurred shortly after a grid fin test, reinforcing the possibility that adjustments or inspections in this area were necessary. Amidst these developments, SpaceX officially postponed the launch of Flight 8 on Wednesday, pushing it from its original target of February 28th to March 3rd. This follows a previous delay from February 26th to 28th. While the exact reason for the delay remains undisclosed, it is evident that both Ship 34 and Booster 15 are not yet fully prepared, requiring additional work before the launch. Interestingly, based on the current timeline, SpaceX does not appear to be planning a full wet dress rehearsal before launch. A wet dress typically involves fully fueling the vehicle and running through all pre-launch procedures up to the point of engine ignition. Skipping this step suggests a high level of confidence in the vehicle's readiness, or it could indicate that previous tests have already provided sufficient validation. Additionally, SpaceX has yet to receive the final launch authorization, the flight license, from the FAA. Given that preparations for launch are in their final stages, it is reasonable to assume that the FAA has concluded its investigation into the Flight 7 anomaly, and SpaceX has addressed the findings by implementing design modifications, procedural updates, or additional safety measures for Flight 8. The FAA approval is expected soon, likely before the revised March 3rd launch date. Although the launch license has yet to be issued, all other regulatory preparations appear to be in place, paving the way for Flight 8. Notices to air missions have been issued for the airspace surrounding both the launch and landing sites, restricting flights during the scheduled window. Additionally, two new NOTAMs for potential debris recovery areas in the Atlantic Ocean have also been posted. These were not marked for previous launches. Alongside these airspace restrictions, navigational warnings have also been released for maritime operators, advising them to steer clear of designated hazard zones near the launch site and the upper state splashdown region in the Indian Ocean. Notably, the current navigational warning for the launch site encompasses a broader area compared to those issued for Flight 7. This expansion is a precautionary measure following the Flight 7 upper stage anomaly, which resulted in debris re-entering Earth's atmosphere and reports of fragments landing on the Turks and Caicos Islands. By extending the safety boundaries and adding new NOTAMs, SpaceX and regulatory authorities aim to mitigate risks and account for potential deviations during Flight 8. Understanding the Flight 7 anomaly is crucial to seeing how SpaceX has improved Starship for Flight 8. A couple of days ago, SpaceX released its investigation findings and outlined the design changes made to prevent a recurrence. Let's take a closer look at what went wrong and how SpaceX has addressed the issue.
The company reports that, during Ship 33's ascent, a flash was observed near a Raptor vacuum engine in the unpressurized attic section, followed by a pressure increase indicating a leak. Minutes later, another flash led to sustained fires, which damaged critical systems and forced all but one engine to shut down. Shortly after, communication with the vehicle was lost, and Starship eventually broke apart during re-entry. SpaceX confirmed the flight termination system was operational at signal loss and triggered as expected. The root cause of the failure was traced to an unexpectedly strong harmonic response within the propulsion system. Excessive oscillations in the engine feed lines, several times stronger than those seen in ground tests, caused severe mechanical stress, leading to structural fatigue and rupture of the fuel lines. This failure allowed propellant to leak into the attic section, where the ship's venting system was unable to expel it quickly enough. The accumulated fuel eventually ignited, resulting in sustained fires that severely compromised the vehicle's ability to maintain engine operation. This cascading failure led to the loss of propulsion and, ultimately, the vehicle itself. To prevent a recurrence of the Flight 7 anomaly, SpaceX has made several key modifications to Ship 34 for Flight 8. The propellant feed lines have been reinforced to withstand harmonic stresses, Propellant temperature management has been optimized to enhance fuel stability and minimize fluctuations that could contribute to structural oscillations. And the engine thrust profiles have been revised to mitigate resonance effects and prevent excessive vibrations. Also, additional venting and a gaseous nitrogen purge system now prevent flammable gas buildup in the attic. SpaceX revealed that future iterations of Starship will incorporate the advanced Raptor 3 engine which will significantly reduce the attic's volume and eliminate most of the joints that contributed to the leak in Flight 7. To validate these design modifications, SpaceX conducted a 60-second extended-duration static fire test on Ship 34 two weeks ago. The test aimed to recreate the harmonic conditions that led to the Flight 7 failure while evaluating multiple thrust levels and hardware adjustments to confirm the effectiveness of the implemented fixes. While Starship suffered a catastrophic failure, Flight 7's Super Heavy Booster 14 demonstrated continued progress in recovery operations, successfully returning to the launch site. However, the mission also exposed a low-power condition in the igniter system, which prevented one of the 13 inner raptors from relighting during the boost backburn. Despite this setback, the booster successfully ignited all 13 engines for the landing burn, including the one that had previously failed. This allowed Super Heavy to decelerate and execute its second-ever catch attempt. To prevent ignition failures in future flights, SpaceX has upgraded the Raptor igniter system, improving its reliability for boost back and landing burns. With these critical upgrades and fixes implemented for both Starship and Super Heavy, Flight 8 is set to build on past lessons while advancing the vehicle's capabilities. Looking ahead to missions beyond Flight 8, SpaceX recently submitted an FCC application seeking authorization for telemetry and communications during Flight 9, hinting at a potential launch as early as March 14. Notably, the application reveals plans to bring Starship back from orbit and attempt a catch with the tower's chopstick arms, marking a significant milestone in the vehicle's reusability efforts. However, the catch will not happen immediately. Starship must complete multiple orbits before deorbiting, as orbital phasing dictates that Starbase must align beneath its trajectory for a controlled re-entry and landing attempt. This delay will give SpaceX enough time to move the recovered booster away from a launch pad and prepare the pad for Starship catching. More details on the recovery process are expected as Flight 9 approaches. us. Starship 35, the vehicle assigned for Flight 9, has already been fully stacked and is currently being prepared for cryo-proof testing at the production site. Meanwhile, its partner, Booster 16, has also been stacked and is undergoing final preparations for its own cryo-testing. Now, Let's discuss the latest update from the world of science and technology. In a dramatic turn of events, SpaceX has uncovered the root cause behind a recent Falcon 9 anomaly while the FAA has weighed in on the incident. On February 1, SpaceX successfully launched the Starlink Group 11 4 mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, marking the 200th Falcon 9 flight from the site. The mission deployed 22 Starlink satellites into their designated low Earth orbit approximately 61 minutes after liftoff enhancing the Constellation's global coverage and network reliability. Following satellite deployment, the Falcon 9 upper stage was supposed to perform a controlled deorbit burn, ensuring it would re-enter Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean and disintegrate safely. However, the upper stage failed to execute the burn, leading to an uncontrolled re-entry on February 19th. 
The re-entry was widely visible across northern Europe, and while most of the stage burned up in the atmosphere, some debris survived the descent and impacted the ground. Pieces of the rocket, including a composite over wrapped pressure vessel that stores high-pressure helium for turbo pump spin-up and tank pressurization, were recovered in Poland. In an official statement, SpaceX attributed the failure to a small liquid oxygen leak that developed during the coast phase of the mission. This leak caused higher-than-expected vehicle body rates, leading to the decision not to perform the deorbit burn to ensure safety. The vehicle was successfully passivated on orbit to remove stored energy sources. The FAA reviewed the incident and determined that all mission events occurred within the scope of licensed flight activities. The agency confirmed that SpaceX met all safety requirements at the end of the mission and has not classified the event as a mishap at this time. SpaceX is currently investigating the root cause of the leak and has already implemented mitigation measures for future missions. The company is also collaborating with the Polish government on recovery and cleanup efforts, confirming that no hazardous materials were present in the debris. Despite this anomaly, SpaceX quickly resumed operations, successfully launching a dozen Falcon 9 missions in the subsequent weeks. This rapid turnaround demonstrates their ability to quickly diagnose issues, implement solutions, and maintain their high launch cadence. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.